It's time once again to gather around the fireplace, to sit back, relax, and let your imagination be your guide through the bizarre world of another weird weather tale. Tonight, the subject is sound, haunting, mysterious sounds which travel through the atmosphere when the air is clear and cool and still. Sounds which seem to come from nowhere. The setting for tonight's weird weather tale is Yellowstone Park, Montana, and what at first seemed like a typical summer camping and fishing trip. About eight o'clock on the morning of July 30th, after having camped on the shore of Shoshone Lake, we entered the canoe and pushed off from the Shingley Beach, headed for the northern end of the lake. The surface of the lake was glassy, the air was still, a faint haze overhung the water. The sky was cloudless, and the lake for a considerable distance out was in the shadow of heavily timbered hills. The canoe had barely gotten underway and was not more than 20 meters from the shore when suddenly there arose a musical sound of rare sweetness, rich timbre and full volume whose effect was increased by the noiseless surroundings. The sound appeared to come from directly overhead and both of us at the same moment instinctively glanced upward, each afterward asserting that so great was his astonishment that he was almost prepared to see a pipe organ suspended in midair. The sound, by the most perfect gradation, increased in volume and pitch, reaching its climax a few seconds after the paddling of the canoe was involuntarily suspended. And then, rapidly growing fainter and diminishing in pitch, it seemed to pass away toward the south. Following the dying away of the music and the short period in which we were held spellbound, paddling was resumed, and as the canoe gained sufficient headway, the music recurred in practically the same form as the first, and as the paddling ceased and the momentum of the canoe fell off, the sound again died away. The weather conditions in tonight's tale are typical of many of the stories of strange, seemingly inexplicable sounds. Point number one, it was clear and cool and windless. It is a simple physical fact that sound travels more efficiently through a dense medium. Cold air is dense, and therefore sounds can be clearer in the cool of the morning. Point number two, the conditions were also favorable for a temperature inversion, where the temperature actually increases as you go up instead of the usual decrease. The inversion can act to reflect sound waves, causing them to travel in unusual ways. But from where did the specific melodic sound in tonight's tale come? Upon investigation, our campers found out. A jointed bamboo salmon rod with its butt end touching the side of the canoe was projecting backward about a foot and a half beyond the end of the boat. The silk fishing line was reeled in, but about three feet of the line with the lure at the end wrapped several times around the terminal joint. A lead sinker weighing four ounces was dangling from the end of the rod, about 10 inches below the surface of the water. As the canoe moved through the water, the short length of free line held taut by the sinker vibrated in concert with the speed of the boat. The vibrations were transmitted through the bamboo rod to the canoe. There, the thin, curved, rigid sides and bottom acted as a sounding board and gave out the enhanced volume of sound that seemed to be focused overhead. As explained earlier, it was the temperature structure of the air that morning that made the sound so clear and focused. Mystery solved. But this is just one mystery of things that go bump and hiss and hum, shattering the stillness of a tranquil dawn. It's just another of the many riddles of the atmosphere that challenge the senses of those who observe it carefully. It's a challenge that we will carry forward next time we gather at the fireplace for another weird weather tale.